Yellow Submarine What the fridge can I say about the Beatles that hasn't been said already? They're among the biggest names in music history. Not only did they define and even revolutionize music throughout the 60s, but also their fame has gone up to the point that everybody has at least that one Beatles song that they consider their favorite. Heck, some of them would even argue about their favorite Beatles, period. Rather it be the early 60s boy band, the late 60s psychedelic times, or the early 70s rock group. But then came 1968. A pinnacle moment in Beatles history when they got their own animated feature, which would end up being their most popular film and named after one of their most well-known songs. So, with all that said, does all this film need his love? Or is this made by a bunch of nowhere men? Let's find out. The Story In terms of the format of the story, there is no other comparison this movie can have other than Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. It's like this movie knew perfectly well how it became a timeless classic and interpreted to its own plot. Like Alice, the story is rather simple to tell since it's powered only by a goal. The Beatles must go to Pepperland to stop the Blue Meanies and restore peace and harmony to the land. However, this is not really what this movie is about. The focus is instead put into the environment that surrounds the Beatles, the strange characters they meet, and of course, their music. In many ways, this can probably count as the perfect fantasy film. From beginning to end, it takes us to this world that is literally unlike our own, down to the point where even the basic logic is entirely different from ours. In fact, things even get crazy when we see the Beatles in their home in Liverpool. Just park it here. I'll just park it here. It actually gives this movie a more unique edge from any other fantasy film similar to this. Even in Alice in Wonderland, there is at least something or a scene that is rooted to reality for the audience to relate, which nowadays has become a regular trope that's been used over and over. But in here, everything is psychedelically surreal, which makes it enjoyably unpredictable, never knowing what to expect next, or still not knowing what happened after it passed. However, even if nothing here seems to make sense, it's somehow constructed to feel like a complete story. From every song, to every obstacle, to every character they meet, they all connect to tell the Beatles' journey. Not one moment feels like a waste of time and are all meant to show how to spread peace and love. Maybe there is a story, maybe there isn't, but one thing's for sure, it takes you on an amazing experience. The Animation Before I get into this, let me tell you a little bit about the art movement called pop art. What began in the 1950s and became popular in the 1960s, it's an art movement that centers around pop culture and modern media. Sometimes it's also associated with the use of vibrant colors. You might know some artists during this movement like Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, Jasper Johns, Keith Haring, and many more. Now imagine what happens if you take this art movement and bring it to life through the magic of animation. That is pretty much Yellow Submarine. Throughout its 90 minute run, it is absolutely beautiful to watch and possibly the most colorful animated feature ever made. The designs have a bit of a simple look to them, but it has this artistic touch that brings out its own voice that only the film can create. Not to mention the list of highly creative characters like the Army of Blue Meanies, the inhabitants of the Sea of Monsters, and even the Beatles themselves giving out a psychedelic edge to their looks. As for the backgrounds, each place is like an art piece of a surrealistic landscape, like in Pepperland, Liverpool, and in each of the seas they go to. A, B, C, D, can I bring my friend to tea? E, F, G, H, I, J, I love you. And then there's the character animation itself. Some may argue that it looks rather cheap, since it does use limited animation. Well, yeah, it is true, but when you think about it, would it really work if the animation is uh, better, per se? 
think about it. If you give this film the top quality sophisticated Disney animation, it wouldn't connect to the rest of the film. Again, it has no reality to set itself on, so it can manage to get away with the characters moving like how they are. But then there are the musical numbers. These are the highlights of the movie, and they even give out their own style, yet still manage to work in the context of the film. Some would use rotoscoping like Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, some would really test the film's surrealistic style like Nowhere Man, and some would try their own pop art style like Only a Northern Song. If there is one criticism I would find here, it does happen when it would have some technical issues, like misplaced colors and stuff that would randomly disappear and reappear. It could have been fixed by a quick revision during the production, but it ends up looking like the animation may be a bit rushed. There are only a selected few films out there that treat animation like an actual form of art. This is one of the prime examples. The Characters The strange world of Pepperland would not be complete without the characters that live there. Starting off with the Beatles, the entire group can be seen more as one whole main character than individually. Otherwise, there wouldn't be much about them. John is the smart guy, Paul is the pretty boy, and George is the one at peace. The only one that could count as a more fleshed out character individually is Ringo, whose kind heart and curiosity is the one that carries and progresses the film. When putting them all together, they have this strong sense of likability and fun since it's obvious how they work well with each other. Okay, well, another reason for that sense is because of the iconography of the Beatles, and this movie is surrounded by their songs. So, if you decide to watch this movie, you're not gonna go in hating the Beatles. Outside of the group, there's old Fred, the eccentric sailor in charge of getting the Beatles to save Pepperland, Jeremy, who is the living version of Nowhere Man, where he holds high knowledge in many fields, but aren't necessarily useful in the sea of nothing. You speak English? Old English, middle, a dialect, pure. Well, do you speak English? You know, I'm not sure. He's so smart, he doesn't even remember what he knows. And then there are the blue meanies. Considering how Pepperland is a weird world of peace and love, it would only be fitting if there are these Grinch-like characters who hate everything that the place stands for. The leader of the group is this crazy villain that would often switch from being very soft and calm to absolutely bombastic and beating up his sidekick, Max. As for his army, I've already mentioned how imaginative they look, and that's how they have their memorability, each having a unique power, purpose, and significant look to stop the people's joy, music, and love. So maybe the movie doesn't focus on a lot of characters but the ones they do focus are nothing short of fantastic. The Songs Okay, I don't normally do this since this would technically count as a jukebox musical, but considering how this is a movie that's driven by the Beatles and their music, it would practically be criminal if I don't look into it. As it is a movie about the Beatles, the main element of this film is the songs, and most of them are already considered some of the greatest. In fact, some of the elements in this film are based around the songs. Rather it be a plot element like All You Need Is Love, describing a character like Nowhere Man, or based on the scenario they're in like When I'm 64. What's interesting to note is that these musical numbers also work as its own music video as much as a moment in the film, like the surrealistic nature of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. These are already established classics, and the addition of the psychedelic visuals only enhances the power of these songs. However, with all that said, there actually are four songs that made their debut in this film. The first is All Together Now, playing when the characters start setting sail to go to Pepperland. One, two, three, four, can I have a little more? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I love you. It really sets this positive feeling that can only be strengthened by having more people sing it with you. The second is only a northern song, played when they enter the Sea of Science. They think the chords are going right, but not. It is 
one of the better examples of how it can also work as its own music video. But I will say that this is a weird inclusion, considering how George Harrison made it to say screw you to the publishing company, Northern Songs. The next one can arguably be the best of the bunch, Hey Bulldog. Childlike, no one understands. Jackknife, in your sweaty hands. Funny how it wasn't released in the US until the 1999 restoration, but that strong feeling of rock makes it one of the most memorable songs in the film. And finally, there's It's All Too Much, played as the finale to the Beatles' adventure. The psychedelic nature and joyous tone is probably the one that perfectly embodies this movie. What else can I say? They're Beatles songs. Can't really get much better than that! Yellow Submarine is not only a film that perfectly embodies who the Beatles were during that period, but it is also one of the best examples of how animation is a legitimate art form. Enriched with an engaging story, pop art style animation, charming characters, and unforgettable songs that only the Beatles can deliver, it marks as the perfect image of what the psychedelic age is all about. This is an absolute must watch for a variety of fans, which includes those who love the Beatles, animation, pop art, the psychedelic times, and Alice in Wonderland. Even if you don't consider yourself a fan of one of these, it's still worth a watch just to see the surrealistic nature of the film. Maybe you won't understand much of it, but you'll know it is one enjoyable ride. It is a true monument in the history of animation as much as it is a monument in the history of the Beatles. And for that, it absolutely earns the Animat seal of approval. And now, on the count of four, a one, a two, a three, a four, Thank you.